friends. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us. It's time for today's message, part two of our sermon series, The Gospel of Good Health. Today, we're going to talk about the value of exercise. So I'm about to make a statement that may take a moment or two to process. I think it's kind of deep. Here it is. You are not too old to die too young. I'll say it again. You're not too old to die too young. Let that sink in. Some of us get to uh, a certain age in life when, you know, listen, things don't work like they used to work, aches and pains uh, set in. It feels like uh, you get up and go, got up and left. And then we give up on feeling better or getting better. But I want to encourage somebody today not to give up. I want to challenge all of us to commit to living as strong as we can for as long as we can. 
So initially, uh, when uh, I started thinking about this series, I really envisioned it as a three-part series. I was going to talk about the value of good nutrition, the value of exercise, and the value of laughing a lot. And then I came across a program that's called New Start. New Start is a preventative lifestyle program. It was developed, I don't know, 40 or so years ago uh, out in California, the Weimar Institute for Health and Education. So it was created to help uh, educate people on uh, how to take better care of themselves holistically, body, mind, uh, spirit. Uh, and, and it used Bible-based concepts. So the phrase New Start is actually an acronym for the eight areas that the program focuses on. Nutrition, exercise, water, and then sunlight, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God. Now, I'm not promoting the program at all, but boy, do I really like uh, those eight components. And I want to focus the rest of this series on that. So we're going to spend the next seven weeks talking about those additional seven components. Last week, we talked about nutrition. Today, I want to talk about the value of exercising. See, when Jesus told his disciples to go make disciples, he was not promoting a sedentary lifestyle. He wasn't promoting a sit-around lifestyle spiritually or physically. And so we're going to talk about the value of exercise today. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to serve. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come before your people to proclaim your word. Now, Lord, may everything I'm about to say and do be inspired and instructed by the Holy Spirit so that your truth and nothing but your truth is spoken, received, and believed. In Jesus' name, amen. So the very first thing I need to do, as I did last week, is to offer my disclaimer. This is my disclaimer. I am not a medical doctor. I'm not board certified in any shape, form, or fashion. I will occasionally uh, go to the uh, Google School of Medicine for my personal use, but I'm not in any way qualified to give anybody any medical advice. My goal is simply to encourage you to see your body the way God sees it so that we take better care, better care of ourselves so that we live strong for as long as the Lord sees fit. So let's take a look at Genesis. I want to remind you, we talked about it a little bit last week, but I want to go to Genesis, the second chapter, verse 15, and let this sink in. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So the Bible reminds us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are. My blueprint, not exactly like your blueprint. We are unique in that way. But all of us share the same purpose, and that is to worship God. And worship uh, is a physical activity, right? We bow down to honor, we kneel to pray, we lift our hands to give thanks, bow, kneel, lift. Sounds like an exercise routine to me. So who remembers Jack LaLanne? He was a fitness and nutrition guru back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. And what about Jane Fonda? How many of you did that Jane Fonda workout? And tell the truth and shame the devil I know some of y'all were sweating to the oldies with Richard Simmons. But did you realize that the original exercise routine took place in the Garden of Eden with Adam? God told Adam to go tend and keep the garden. Tending and keeping a garden is a full body workout. I mean, no one had to tell Adam to uh, go to the gym because the gym was right there in his own backyard. He had plenty of exercise, tending and keeping the garden on a daily basis. And by all accounts, it was a delightful experience until things changed after the fall. So sin comes in and now there are the realities of sickness, disease and death. And that original exercise routine would change. Look at Genesis 3.17. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. And let me explain what I think that means. So prior to the fall, 
tending and keeping uh, didn't involve sweating and grunting. It just didn't. But now, tending and keeping would become a painful and frustrating experience. The ground itself would be cursed, and Adam is going to have to deal with the weeds and the thorns and the thistles. If he's going to eat, he's got to deal with that. And so at this point, there would be no gain without pain and sweat and digging of weeds. And so here we are today. We're living in that same reality, right? No pain, no gain. You've heard that. Exercise is not easy, but it is essential to our good health. When we exercise, the whole body benefits. Our muscles become stronger. Uh, our, uh, the, the blood flows through our body uh, in a better way. Our lungs uh, get stronger. Our, our, our body chemistry reacts better. Our nerves and nervous system responds better. Our metabolism will rev up. Exercise does the body good. Now, if you lose weight and you exercise, that's great. If you bulk up like the Hulk when you exercise, that is great. But that should not be the end goal. Most importantly, the thing we want to strengthen our body for is so that we become better servants of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 9, 26 and 27. Therefore, Paul says, I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Paul is saying he's in it to win it. He's in it to win it. He's in it to win souls for Jesus Christ. That's his purpose, to live a life that's holy and acceptable to God. God wants us to be in good spiritual and physical condition, and the benefits are endless. I was looking at a study conducted by the Harvard School of uh, Public Health, and, and there is a correlation between exercise and a whole bunch of sickness and disease. Heart disease, for instance. People who engage in regular physical activity have a significantly reduced risk of developing heart disease. Exercise and stroke. If you walk more than 12 miles a week, it will decrease your risk of stroke, the article says, by like 29%. Exercise and cancer for men, it will decrease the risk of prostate cancer by 74% and will lower the risk of colon cancer. For women, regular exercise linked to a decreased risk of breast cancer and other female-specific cancers. And even if you have a breast cancer diagnosis, they say if you walk 68 hours a week, it can decrease the risk of early death by as much as 50%. And then exercise and obesity. You know this. You can't lose weight if your energy intake is greater than your energy output. In other words, you got to move more and eat less. Exercise and diabetes. Moderate exercise is a better reducer of the risk and effects of diabetes than certain prescribed medications. Exercise and osteoporosis and arthritis. Osteoporosis can be prevented, it says, and even reversed by weight-bearing exercises. And then regular exercise, exercise can help uh, relieve arthritis. And then exercise and mental health. Exercise reduces stress and reduced stress can lead to better mental health. And I heard someone explain what lack of exercise actually does to your brain and how it can affect our mental health. He says that when we do not exercise, he says the neurological uh, pathways in our that the, the neurological pathways in our brain uh, they they get uh, cluttered, they get overgrown with 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 weeds, so to speak, like uh, weeds on a pathway you're trying to walk on. And what he says that does is it blocks the communication between our movement and our mind. But he says, but when we do exercise. Exercise, we end up clearing those pathways, if you will, and that helps to resynchronize how we think and how we move, and it promotes better mental health. I want to encourage you to exercise, but check with your doctor before you do any type of new exercise program and make sure whatever program you do is an age appropriate exercise. None of us are 20 anymore. At the end of the day, Life is full of challenges that require endurance and heavy 
lifting. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, you wait on the Lord, he renew your strength, you'll mount up like wings of, uh, of eagles, you'll, you'll run and not get weary, you'll walk and you won't be faint. Listen, it takes strength to mount up with wings like eagles. It takes strength to run and not get weary. It takes strength to walk and to not faint. I want to leave you what Paul declared in, uh, to the church in Thessalonica in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. He left them with this. He says, Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. I want you to notice the order that Paul put those in. Spirit, soul, and and body. The spirit, important. It connects us to God for worship and fellowship with God. The soul connects us to our emotions and who we are in Christ, how we see ourselves. The body connects us to everything that is around us. Spirit, soul, body. Paul is saying that maturing in Christ is a full body workout. A healthy spirit, a healthy soul, and a healthy body. God wants us to be in good spiritual and physical shape. I said it earlier, and I'm saying it now. Let's get better together. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can we pray for you? We'd love to pray for you and your family. If you have a prayer concern or celebration, send us an email to aumc at ashfordumc.org. Our prayer team is standing by to pray for you. Thank you, as always, for your generosity. If you'd like to share a gift with us, you can do so in a multitude of ways. They're right there on your screen. The most convenient thing to do is simply go to our website at ashfordumc.org uh, and click the Give button, uh, and you will uh, you will be prompted as to how you can share a gift. Uh, again, thank you for your continued generosity. There are multiple other ways to give as well, and they're right there on your screen. Lord, we thank you for your word that has gone forward. I thank you, Lord, that because it is your word, it never returns void. I thank you, Lord, that those that heard it, believe it, and receive it. Lord, help us to all uh, do what we need to do to live strong as long as you so, so desire. Lord, bless the gifts and the givers. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you so much for being with us today. As always, you're invited to join us in our sanctuary each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock. We're 2201 South Derry Ashford Road on the west side of Houston. We'd love to uh, see your face in the place and worship the good Lord uh, together. And listen, bring your children because we have an outstanding children's ministry. Our Kids Zone volunteers are standing by uh, to uh, teach the Word of God on their level. We have a nursery for uh, your children who are uh, six weeks, and then we go up to 12 years of age in our Kids Zone. And listen, please come and join us uh, this coming January. We're going to the Holy Land. It's going to be a great trip, uh, and you're invited to come and join us. Uh, the deadline is fast approaching for you to register. Uh, so if you've been thinking about it, uh, make the decision to go. Come and join us. It's going to be an outstanding trip, and we'd love for you to be with us. Well, I send you forth each and every Sunday with three questions. I provide the questions. You know the answers. Who's the head of this church? Jesus. Who is the church? We are the church. And what are we as a church called to do? We are called to serve. God bless you all. I'll see you next time.